Okay, ready to unpack something fascinating. Always. Today, we're teeing up a deep dive into the world of golf. The world of golf. Now, before you think golf, not for me, stick with us. Okay. This isn't about hitting a hole in one. It's about the why behind the love for this centuries-old game. Centuries-old, yeah. It all started with this book that mysteriously landed on our doorstep. Oh. A beautiful hardcover titled Love Golf, a gift book from the heart. A gift book, huh? Yeah. Interesting. So right away piqued our interest. For sure. For sure. What's it about? Like, is it a how-to? That's the thing. It's not. You can tell right away. It's not meant to be a technical manual. Okay. This is for anyone who's ever felt that, you know, pull towards the green. Right. Even if they've never swung a club in their life. Ah, some more philosophical. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And the author, Augusto Tormas, he dedicated it to his son, Leonardo. How sweet. And uh, the language is so, it's evocative. It really focuses on the emotions, the experiences that make golf so compelling. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. So how does it approach this whole love for golf thing? Well, the way Thomas dives into golf's history is fascinating. Okay. He doesn't bore us with dates and names. Right. Instead, he frames it around the evolution of the golf swing. Oh, clever. He calls it a history, and I love this, teed up in three swings. I like that. <laughs> okay, I'm intrigued. Three swings, huh? Yes. So each swing style represents not just a change in technique, but a shift in the culture surrounding golf. Okay, makes sense. So walk me through these swings. What's the first one? So we start in 17th century Netherlands. Netherlands. Yeah. Huh. I always think Scotland when I think golf. Picture windmills and those beautiful canals. Okay, yeah, I can picture it. And this is where folks were playing the ball, which almost sounds casual. Playing the ball, yeah, it does sound a bit casual, doesn't it? Compared to the golf we know today. Right, right. But why the Netherlands? Is that where golf started? Well, the book draws a connection between early golf and a game called golf. Golf. Never heard of it. It was played on frozen canals. Oh, wow. With wooden balls. Wow. Imagine trying to control your swing on ice. Yikes. Yeah. Makes a carefully manicured fairway seem like a dream. Right. You got to wonder how many lost balls ended up in the canal. Oh, I'm sure. Countless. Yeah. Sunken treasure. Right. All right. So that's playing the ball in the Netherlands. What's next? Okay. So moving on from the Netherlands, Tomas takes us to 18th century Scotland. Ah, Scotland. Now we're talking. Anyone who knows even a little bit about golf knows this is where things get serious. Absolutely. The birthplace of golf as we know it. St. Andrews. Iconic. And this era is all about roiling the ball. Roiling the ball. Love that. It really captures the like the formality yeah. that was emerging around the game at the time. Like it wasn't just about how you swung the club. Exactly. It was the etiquette specific clubs. Yes. The rules of the game were starting to be like Codified. It's like golf was leveling up yeah. from a casual pastime to a sport of kings or at least royalty. Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Okay. So we've gone from playing to roiling. What's the third swing? All right. So the journey doesn't end there. Okay. We cross the pond to 19th century England. England. The era of feeling the ball. Feeling the ball. Okay. Now, this is where things start to sound a little more familiar to you know, modern ears. I would imagine so, yeah. Wouldn't you say? Yeah, definitely. So this is when golf, as we know it today, really starts to take shape. This is it. This is when it really starts to come together. Fascinating. So the book, like, goes into detail about this era. Oh, yeah. He references everything from famous players, early golf instruction books. Oh, wow. To even cartoons. Cartoons, really? It's amazing to see how visual humor has always been a part of the game. That's hilarious. I love that. Right. Yeah. So, okay, playing the ball, roiling the ball, feeling the ball, three very distinct eras, swing styles, and really vibes, right? It makes you wonder how the game itself evolved alongside these swings. Yeah. Did the equipment change? Did the courses themselves have to adapt? Yeah, you've got to think. We'll have to dig into that more. We will. But yeah. first, yes. who do you think sent us this book and why? Ooh, good question. Could this be a clue, like to get us into the golf spirit? Maybe, maybe. A clue, maybe leading us deeper into the mysteries of the golf universe. Who knows? Right. Right. But speaking of mysteries, this book, it dives into some intriguing concepts. It does, it does. Like the 15th club. The 15th club. Have you gotten to that part yet? Yes. 
And I have to admit, when I first read that, yeah, I picture myself rummaging through my golf bag like, did I miss one? Right. Like, what is that? Yeah. But it's not a literal club. No. No. It's one of those brilliant metaphors oh, that makes you see the game in a whole new light. It really does. Right. So think about it. You've got your woods. You've got your irons. Your putter. Okay. But what about the mental game? The emotions. Yeah. The self-doubt that creeps in when you're, you know, lining up that crucial putt. That's the 15th club. Yes. Oh, I love that. It's that unseen force that can either help you conquer the course or, or completely sabotage your game. Yes, precisely. And Tomas uses this, like, really powerful image to illustrate it. A lone golfer okay. standing on the 18th hole at St. Andrews. Oh, well, the weight of the entire round on their shoulders. Yeah. It's like that moment of truth where technique alone isn't enough. Exactly. They need that extra something. They need that resilience, that ability to quiet your mind, trust their instincts. Yes. It's the culmination of practice, discipline, self-belief. Wow. All those I... things we often, you know, forget to pack alongside our golf balls and tees. Right. Right. It's so true. So it's about mastering your inner game as much as your swing, it sounds like. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, it makes you wonder if other sports have their own versions of the 15th club. Right. What would it be for basketball or for, you know, competitive chess even? That's such an interesting question. I'm imagining it's that, you know, that zone athletes talk about. Right. That flow state yeah. where everything just clicks. But I think what makes the 15th club in golf so fascinating is that it's often, you know, tested in solitude. That's a good point. You're out there on the course, often by yourself, facing down these challenges. Exactly. No teammates to back you up. Right. It's like a microcosm of life in a way, isn't it? It is. And speaking of life beyond the fairway, Thomas also introduces us to... The 19th hole. Oh, the 19th hole. Everyone's favorite hole. Right. Where the real competition begins. Exactly. Though in this case, we're not talking about, you know, adding another stroke to your scorecard. Right. It's about the social connections forged through the game. Uh, oh. The camaraderie. Yes. The shared stories and laughter that happen after the final putt has been sunk. It makes you wonder if that's part of what's kept people coming back to golf for centuries. Right. It's not just about the sport itself. Mm -hmm. It's the community that comes with it. Absolutely. Think about it. You're out in nature. Yeah. Enjoying some fresh air, challenging yourself. Right. And then you get to relive those moments with friends, maybe over a drink, a meal. Yes. It's a winning combination. It really is. You know, it really makes you appreciate how this book goes beyond just the technicalities of golf. Yes. It explores the deeper reasons why people really fall in love with the game. It does. And it doesn't just tell us, it shows us. You're talking about the story of the Forgotten Fairway, right? Yes. Ex this tale is tucked away within the book, almost like a hidden gem waiting to be discovered. It's a good one. It really is. And it's about this, you know, young golfer named Ewan McAllister. Ewan, yeah. He stumbles upon this mysterious, almost mythical golf course. Oh, wow. Have you ever imagined a course so old that it felt like it held the secrets of all the golfers who'd ever played it? It's like the golf course itself is alive in this story. Yes. Right? And it's testing him. Testing him. It's pushing him to face his own limitations, I think. Interesting. Interesting. So what happens? Give me some details about this course. What's it like? Oh, the descriptions are incredible. Okay. Fairways that seem to shift and change with every swing. Oh, wow. Bunkers that deepen with every doubt that creeps into Ewan's mind. It's like a physical manifestation of the mental game. Yes, exactly. That we were just talking about. Exactly. It really highlights the mental fortitude it takes to excel at golf, wouldn't you say? For sure. So what happens to Ewan? Does he make it through? Well, we won't spoil the ending. Okay, okay, fair enough. Let's just say Ewan's journey on this mystical course, it teaches him some valuable lessons, both about golf and himself. I like that. It's a good reminder that sometimes the most important journeys are the ones we take within ourselves. That's a good way of putting it, yeah. Right. But the surprises don't end there. Okay. This book has one more trick up its sleeve. A section called, are you ready for this? The Golfer's Library. The Golfer's Library? Get out of here! That's amazing. I love that. Have you had a chance to dive into that yet? Oh, yes. And let me tell you, it's an absolute treasure trove. We're talking books, articles, wow. even YouTube videos spanning centuries. No way. It's clear that Augusta Tomas is a true student of the game. Yeah, he clearly loves it. 
And he's curated this incredible resource for anyone who wants to like deepen their understanding, their appreciation of golf. That's amazing. Isn't that cool? It's almost overwhelming in a way. Like, I know. Where do you even begin? Right. Do you start with the oldest texts and work your way forward? Do you jump around based on, you know, what piques your interest? It's like... But like being handed the keys to a secret library, isn't it? Yes. Hidden away somewhere. Yeah. It's full of, like you said, all these treasures, all these different perspectives on the game. And again, it brings us back to the mystery of this gift. Right. Who sent it? Who sent it? And why? And why? Are they hoping to inspire us to become, like golf historians mm. or right, right or is there a deeper message hidden within these pages waiting for us to unlock it Ooh, i like that Wah. a hidden message maybe this is just the beginning of our golf journey <laughs> it's like we've stumbled onto a real life riddle haven't we we have with this book this whole deep dive right it's like we're on a quest to unravel not just the mysteries of golf yes but the mystery of the gift itself it's true. And you know, the funny thing is, yeah. even having never played a full round of golf myself, okay, this book, this love letter, as we keep calling it, right. it sparked something, a curiosity that I wasn't expecting. You know, that's what I think is so remarkable about golf. It has this ability to transcend, you know? What do you mean? Like generations, cultures, even skill levels. Right. It's a shared language spoken on courses all over the world. You're right. It's timeless in a way. It is. And this book, yeah. with its mix of history and philosophy and even those personal anecdotes, mm -hmm. it really captures that essence. It does. And you know what else? Don't forget that touch of like magical realism. Oh, right. That story, The Forgotten Fairway. Yes. That really stayed with me. It's such a it's such a powerful image, you know, this idea that yeah. boy, if, like life can be full of these unexpected twists and turns. You never know what challenges you might face on that course. Right. What hidden bunkers might be lying in wait. Or what mystical courses you might stumble upon. Exactly. But, you know, as we kind of wrap up this deep dive here, yeah. I keep coming back to this idea of the gift itself. Okay. It's a beautifully crafted book. Yes. Left anonymously on our doorstep. It is a mystery. It feels almost like a challenge, doesn't it? A challenge? How so? It's like, okay. We've explored the history, the philosophy, right. the emotional side of golf. Right. But now it's up to us okay. to take that knowledge and do something with it. I like that. You know, maybe that's picking up a club for the first time. Yeah. Maybe it's diving into that golfer's library. Mm. Or maybe, maybe it's just looking at the world a little differently. Oh, I like that. With a newfound appreciation for the subtleties, the surprises mm. that life, you know, throws our way. I think that's a wonderful way to look at it. It's a call to action, an invitation to engage with the world around us. Yes. With that same curiosity, that same like open heartedness that Augusto Thomas brings to golf. Yes. And who knows? Maybe someday we'll uncover the mystery of who sent us this this incredible gift. Right. Maybe it was a fellow golf enthusiast, a silent admirer of the show. Maybe. Or maybe. Maybe it was even Leonardo himself. Oh, wow. Sharing his father's love for the game with the world. Wouldn't that be something? It would. But until then, I think we have a lot to think about. So to our listeners, we leave you with this. What will your next move be? Ooh, good one. Will you, you know, step onto the green, explore the pages of golf history? Yes. Or simply carry the lessons of love golf with you into your everyday life? Whatever you choose, we hope this deep dive has inspired you to, to embrace the journey, to find joy in the unexpected. Absolutely. And to always, always keep exploring.